The Supreme Court this week issued its long-awaited decision in the case of Donald J. Trump versus the United States, and it was a stunner. The court created a new standard that a president has total immunity for actions within the core constitutional functions of the presidency. Presidents will have presumed immunity for other official acts and no immunity for non-official acts. It seems to be a vast expansion of executive power. Chief Justice John Roberts' opinion also said, no president is above the law, something we've always assumed in America. So Tara, is that still the case? No, it isn't. In 2016, prior to the Iowa caucuses, Donald Trump said, and I quote, I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters. Now, if one presumes that the six justices who just granted total immunity in official acts are Trump <coughs> voters, he has basically been proven right. And under this ruling, Trump could claim almost any crime he commit or has committed is part of his official duties. And one of the 234 judges that he appointed basically would agree with him. So one issue that I'm wondering about is, is how this looks to conservatives, because I, mean, I think many people are relieved for Trump because of his uh, impending legal uh, trials. Um, but are they comfortable, Nina, with such breathtaking powers of, uh, in the executive now? I'm not sure that I would agree that the court has given such breathtaking powers to begin with. And I think there's been quite a bit of hyperbole surrounding the uh, political discourse on this case on both sides of the aisle. But I think it's important for us to note what is different about this case. And that is the extent to which the court talks specifically about Trump. Ordinarily, when the Supreme Court is ruling on a case, it's really not ruling with respect to the individual litigants, but rather setting broad precedent, legislative intent, legislative history. But here, there were specific references to the particulars of the case. And so to answer your question, I think part of that discussion would be welcome or have been welcomed by conservatives, but the others not so much. And here is why. The court essentially split the baby. I know everyone's talking about it went one way or the other, but it split the baby. And it said in the case of Trump's uh, 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 litigation, that his discussions with the acting attorney general are off limits, that they are part of his total immunity because it's part of his core constitutional powers insofar as the executive has, according to the court, exclusive authority over Justice Department investigations. However, and this is where I sort of chuckled in reading the discussion, the court said not so much with the vice president. <laughs> that the vice president and Trump's interactions with the vice president are subject to the presumption of immunity, but that can be litigated. And then certainly thirdly, uh, the discussions with state officials, other private par parties, the wannabe uh, fake electors, he said that is for the district courts. But again, I think we need to temper our understanding of what's happened here. The Roberts Court did not side with either conservatives or liberals, but split the baby. But here's what it comes down to. What is an official act? If you listen right. to Donald Trump, Everything he does is an official act. Um, now, his lawyer even argued that the discussions with uh, people in the Republican National Committee are covered. Now, that clearly seems to have more to do with his role as a candidate than as the president. But as Tara said, ultimately, this is going to go back to other courts. And what we're seeing, the courts are, have been very, very willing, especially those that uh, you know, he appointed to act on his behalf. So well, I but it depends. It depends upon which lower federal courts, because all of the different circuits and the federal courts have their own politics. And in this particular case, it was a DC district court and also the DC circuit court that ruled against Trump. So by the, the Supreme Court saying that we're going to remand to these lower courts the decision as to what constitutes constitutes official versus unofficial, I think they left open the door for these courts to decide in a way that is adverse to Trump. Which will get appealed by, by Trump and end up back 
with uh, nine justices on the Potentially, the but the Supreme Court rarely, and again, there could be an exception, the court rarely questions the factual evidentiary findings of a trial court because they have their hands on the documents. Now, Honor Bond, uh, Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, uh, suggested that the fake elector scheme could potentially be official. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. not everybody uh, certainly agreed with that, including some conservative um, uh, legal analysts like Andrew McCarthy at, at the National Yeah, Review. you are very right about that. I was reading Scota's blog by Amy Ho, and she also tries to make this comment that, you know, when Trump is talking to the Justice Department uh, and using the Justice Department to uh, you know, send a new slate of electors that could be counted as an official act. But I agree with Nina f fully in this case, right? The court, it seems like it expanded the power of the presidency. In some cases it did because it will have this kind of chilling effect. It definitely bought Trump some time. Mm -hmm. uh, but the court does devise, uh, devise a three-prong test. First prong, anything that arises from the second um, uh, uh, Article 2 powers is official pardon powers, removal powers, and so on. Anything that is not in Article 2, but you know, has, is, is, is what the court calls the outer perimeter, perimeter of his uh, official acts, that also presumed immunity, not totally. But the third is that there are private acts that can be prosecuted. Now, what the court is saying that, hey, you decide what is a private act. I've given you this test. Yes. You test this. Now, what will happen is anything that now all these cases now they have to pass through these three tests. Yes. In a way, though, Trump is not left uh, untouched because now in Chutkan's court, at least, all these evidences would be now laid out. Exactly. Right? But that will be after the November election. Right. So it, 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 it's uh, not a massive carte blanche to Trump. It though. is not. <laughs> and, and I think that the court, the Supreme Court, sent clues that the federal interference case will probably fall to the wayside. However, the classified documents case that um, came to fore after he was out of office, I think the court was sort of saying, you've got some room here to do what can be done. Mm -hmm. he, he's already uh, trying to say or that, is, that is a, was an official act because he, the boxes were packed. Right, so this could be litigated. When right. he was president. Right. right, so every part of that could be litigated. Is this an official mm -hmm. act or not? So the, co the lower courts would have a lot of chance to make law. So, 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 yeah, sorry. so you would agree then that the, the uh, reaction, a lot of the reaction you think is a bit overwrought? I, I think a bit of that reaction is because people go, didn't go and read the verdict, <laughs> is, is what would happen. Uh, yeah. And they took second hand, third hand, fourth hand propaganda from liberal yep. or uh, conservative outlets basically. Exactly. I would say the other thing is this. We have to always remember that as with other uh, prior chief justices, Rehnquist not so much, but certainly with Roberts, Roberts is aware that the court's power is contingent upon public support. And so he was only go going to go so far as the public has been willing to go. And so far, the electorate is split and he was not going to choose sides.